my money and give it to people, particularly when it leads to the detriment of this country. Unfortunately, what we've had is people that have exploited the generosity of the American people over and over. So now the proper policy should be this. Deny all asylum claims except on an emergency specific basis. That's one. Second, bring back the military from bases all across the world and actually station them on our southern border. And third, start to aggressively prosecute employers in the United States that intentionally hire illegal immigrants. That will stop the incentive for these people to come. And until we get this under wraps and until we get it checked, we should no longer process any of these asylum claims whatsoever. We should also simultaneously while doing that, rein in the excesses of our State Department and intel agencies that cause havoc all across the world with their interventionist policies, which will create less of an incentive for refugees to occur in those countries in the first place. Andrew's policy would be continue to support those State Department, intel agency, military industrial complex people that cause the crisis and then say, well, now you have to suffer as the American people because we're bringing in millions upon millions oh yeah because we can't walk and chew bubble gum at the same time it's either razor wire and machine guns or we can't have a humanitarian effort where we take care of people who really need our help rob yeah well what we see is we can't do that because the past 50 years have exhibited that yeah no well that would be under trump and many republican administrations they didn't do as good as they should have that's true they could have done better, but it certainly was nowhere near the level that we see it exponentially increasing now under Biden. I think that you're disgusting in your inhumanity and the fact that you just don't fucking care about anybody except you, Rob. Enjoy your OnlyFans account. I'm sure it'll work out for you. <laughs> All righty. Uh, you got uh, shot across the bell. Pretty low fucking blow, Rob. Pretty low, bro. I, I'm going to get into callers here real quick. Yeah, thanks for the only. Yeah, real. The Christian behavior, ladies and gentlemen, uh -huh. right here from Rob Noor. All right, peace, Let's crap. Whatever, you've been <laughs> you've been waiting patiently in the background. Go ahead when you're ready. Thank you, Rob. Unfortunately, the moderator was part of your statements in regards to American policy and the morality of such policy was couched somewhat in Christian ethics over the course of the conversation, as to where parents or the polity itself ought have an in group preference over the preference of others. Even as a bad Christian, this is untrue. I mean, you probably don't deny the existence of Abraham or Lot, who were told to explicitly sacrifice their family for explicitly Christian aims. So even within a Christian paradigm, your statement is untrue. And I would also test your isolationist policy even further. And I have to ask a couple questions in between. Well, first, I'd like of, to, if you're... No, if, well, if no you're gonna, I'm not. Well, no, no, I'm going to continue. Well, no, you no, can I'm continue. Going. We'll see if you're going to continue. I bet I could talk louder no, and faster I, I know, than no, you. No, I'd like to respond to the first point. Moderator, moderator, moderator. You're muted, moderator. You're muted. You're muted. Sparky, can I finish my question? I'd like to respond to the first point you made. You made a point. I would like to respond to it. Rob, let him finish. Got to get close to that mic. Got to get close to that mic, aircraft. Let him finish. Okay, Rob. Thank you for uh, seeing a period where there was, in fact, a comma. But I had to ask a couple of clarifying ones because I want to give you the best steel manned position possible. I want to give you the most amount to argue with. Now, I'm not quite as talented as fucking Rob Nor. I can't talk for an infinite amount of time. So I'll apologize to everybody watching in fucking Crucible Land and finish my question now that I've been graciously fucking allowed to do so. So, Rob, in terms of your foreign policy, you made that statement. Over the course of the earlier part of the debate, you said some pretty heavily handed moral claims about our president, Joseph Robinette Biden, in claims as far as ab <laughs> abuse of children, abuse of children, right? I would, I am curious, with your statements on Biden, with your past statements on Epstein, with your past statements of how this is such a condemnable moral evil, would you say... Would you allocate the American military to stomp this items out? Would you pay increased taxes to stomp this evil out and be in, and use an expansionary American military to do so? Thank you so much for your question, Peacecraft. Now, when people accuse me of gish galloping, the intent behind what they're saying is that I make a lot of arguments and say a lot of things with rapidity and sort of the volume at which I speak. I'll have to give you credit for using a lot of words without saying a fucking thing. Now, you do come across as smug, and no doubt you're someone who's self-important as you're sitting with probably a butt plug in your ass right now, trying to seem like you're somehow intelligent and powerful because you're making demands of the moderator to shield from your own insecurity as you make 
the point and was trying to rapidly get me to not address the specific point that you made. Yes, it's I true that the bear bones. Oh, are you going to interrupt me or are you going to give me a chance to speak? You've already acknowledged you're not as good as or intelligent as me, so why don't you sit fucking back and learn for a second? Now, when you brought up the parable of Lot, of course there are times when God has specifically spoken to people in both the Old Testament and through his son in the New Testament and asked things specifically of them. That is a different sort of idea than what the traditional person that isn't getting that direct communication from God should get. The idea that it is not a Christian value to look after your own family first and foremost is ludicrous. It is the role of a Christian father and husband to look after their family first and foremost. And the idea of the parable of Lot somehow meaning, oh, actually you should let your wife and child suffer because you need to help your neighbor's kids because Lot was told to do the same thing is nonsensical. Now, as clearly a biblical scholar as you are, and as someone myself is admitting that's not that much of a biblical scholar, it's weird to me that you were unable to pick up on that. But I digress and we'll go to your second point. Yeah, so I did talk about the moral shortcomings of Joe Biden and seeing about him sniffing children, seeing of him being accused of sexual assault and odious sexual behavior from women that are across the board. We've also talked about Jeffrey Epstein and things that have occurred with him in the past. I have didn't really come up in this. I'm not surprised though. It seems that you're incapable of understanding the things I'm saying because you're probably some low IQ moron that feels the need to call into shows like this to sound self-important because no one actually watches you or has a bother to listen to you when you're talking and not into sort of platform like this when there's bigger names that you could piggyback off to get your self-confidence up. Nonetheless, I will say this. Absolutely, I think that I would be willing to pay taxes for a military. If part of that military was specifically going after credible accusations of sexual trafficking of children, I wouldn't have a problem with that. That's different than an isolationist policy that is in effect what we see now, which is we have military bases all across the world and we're continually told that we need to intercede in countries like Libya, Syria, etc. that always ends up being done by people that don't have the interest of the children at heart. These people that are in controlling our military industrial complex seek to exploit these situations for themselves. And what ends up happening is in the name of saving the noble people of Libya, for example, we actually end up with sex trafficking, not just of adults, but actually minors and actually open air slave markets that we now see in Libya, a country that formerly was number one in sub-Saharan Africa for things like literacy and homeownership. So the idea that just because I would accept that we should use military or taxes to go after child sex trafficking in areas where it actually happens is somehow antithetical to or, or in somehow conflict with my belief that we need to stop these disastrous foreign invasions and protect our own people first is nonsensical. This is this is untrue. And I would like everybody watching this to just run it back from when I first called in other when other than when he tried to interrupt me. I only asked two questions. I only asked two of them. One was, do you think that there's really any Christian moral or ethic that supersedes a father's duty to his children or the polity to their in group? And then the second one was, would you be expansionistic or start a war to stop this moral to stop this moral crime? Right. Uh, unfortunately, we got to some weird fucking gish gallopy shit about uh, Syria and the military industrial complex. But even among Jesus alone, Matthew 25, 31, 40, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Even among from the literal son of God himself, which even though I am pretty agnostic to atheists, both Andrew and Rob would probably take the sources fairly authoritative. Rob ignores it entirely. And in the case of Rob's earlier point in the debate about warships off the coast of fucking Florida or, or fucking uh, increased conflict between nations, Rob is absolutely happy to throw that all away in terms of his intersubjective shit. He has no consistent moral axiom. So, Rob, there's a common question on the Crucible that I would like you to answer. Everybody gets asked for it. And longtime Crucible members will know it absolutely, right? Are Rob, you about to launch into Papua New Rob, Guinea? Rob, there is a small island in Oceania off the coast of Australia called Papua New Guinea. And I would really like to know your foreign policy prescriptions about Papua New Guinea. I don't have any foreign policy prescriptions <laughs> to Papua New Guinea. What I will say is I will take that the one thing you said all right, was absolutely all right. true. Enough, enough, I I like enough on the Papua New Guinea. We can't even do it on the YouTube, I would just want to make one quick point. The only true thing he said that was worth mentioning there was he only said two questions. Yes, that entire rambling diatribe that he had at first was just making two questions, further proving my point that it's a guy that likes to smell his own farts and sound self-important. Really, he wasn't saying jack shit. All right. Uh, thank you for that. Corinth, you've been waiting patiently. Go ahead when you're ready. I'm just happy to be here. I've got a question for you, Mr. Wilson. 
Do you think it's good if the American population is filled with strong men? Um, yeah, maybe, but maybe we have a different definition of what strong is. I, I think it's going to be like a pretty standard definition here. Do you think like your definition would be like the common use definition here? No. What do you mean by strong then? Uh, well, I, I would say that strong has a lot to do with virtues and not just necessarily physical strength. Yeah, that's what I meant to. And like, as we know, hard times create like strong men. They're going to make the virtuous men who go through the hard times. And as we went through in your wonderful opening statement, you've shown that the person that will give people a hard time and create the virtuous <coughs> men is Donald Trump. So I have a question for you. Why don't you support Donald Trump knowing that it's going to give you more strong men? <laughs> You support the entailment of electing Donald Trump by your so, own So hang on. So I just want to make sure that I get this right. So your position is is that Donald Trump's going to be such a shitty president and create so many hard times that that in turn is going to create strong men. And if I want strong men, then I should be voting for Trump, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, you that's can actually watch. that's actually a brutal that's actually a pretty brutal point. Um so I would say, no, I think you can create strong men at the same time, good, virtuous, strong men at the same time that you have uh, policies which are tailored to the American public, which makes sense, where you're not humping hookers and giving them bags of cash. I mean, yeah, but that doesn't have anything to do with him being a president. His personal life, as like we agreed, that Trump Biden was equally morally culpable as Trump. So trying to use that as like the symmetry breaker there isn't going to work. Okay, yeah, it, okay, yeah, maybe. Men. Okay, okay. Why don't you want strong American <laughs> populace, Andrew? <laughs> so, I do. I do want, I think that it's also possible, though, that you can walk and chew bubblegum at the same time. You can have policies, which uh, are an entailment of Christian virtue from good Catholic Biden, uh, which can trickle down to the po to population at large and assist with virtues without making the, it so that, you know, Americans can't afford to feed themselves. But we've all seen the graph. Good times create weak men. Weak times create hard times. <laughs> all right, get out of here. No, listen, if I, can, if I can real quick, the irony is that argument is closer to what you're going to get from Richard Spencer than anything I said. Because he's an accelerationist. So we're not he, there yet. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. We're 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 not done with this debate till we're done with this debate. Oh, I know. We're not there. But you understand what I'm saying. I'm not I don't understand shit. Well, you're that's true. Well, you're you're a fucking evil. You're an evil fucking Republican scumbag. That's true. And you have been effectively destroyed uh -huh. by Big Papa fashion. Okay, <laughs> right here on this debate stage. Frank <clears throat> Omini, yeah. you've been waiting patiently. Go ahead when you're ready. I've just got some questions for you, Andrew. I don't want to talk to Rob because he's clearly a fascist bigot that no one yeah, should actually ever listen to. So I, I'm is. actually, well, I'm actually kind of offended that you decided to platform him in the first place, Andrew. But regardless, you know what? I'll let that slide for now. I've just got a yeah, question. Yeah, I'm sure I'll hear about it on fucking Twitter, huh? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. But I have a question with regards to some of your international policy views. So I, I take it that you believe that in terms of making policy, we should listen to the experts, right? international experts, national and domestic experts. We need to listen to the experts for their professional, informed opinion. Uh, yeah, I do think that we should probably defer uh, to experts. You, for instance, Fresh Palmini is an Orthodox. Wouldn't you consider a priest to be an expert? Do you defer to them? Yeah, uh, yeah certainly, certainly. So there's no disagreement there. What, yeah. what I'm, I'm, but would you include in this particular group of experts the you know, international uh, bodies of scientific experts? So for instance, the uh, International Science Council. I think that it, it also has to be tempered with reason, but I think that uh, that for the most part it is tempered with reason when it comes to policy. How else could you really make policy other than to defer to the expertise of people who are assisting you in crafting it? Okay, do you consider cartographers to be experts? I do think that there are cartographic experts, yes. And do you, do you think that cartographic experts believe in the existence of Australia? on mass as a community um i have been told that most cartographic experts do believe in the existence of a country called australia yes and you so you trust the experts don't you andrew 
Yes, I trust the experts. <laughs> so, you know, I, want you to look at the I, want, I want you to look at the camera right now, <laughs> and I want you to say, I believe in the existence of Australia. I trust the experts. Have a good one, uh, Fresh Palmini. You take care of yourself. <coughs> it was nice for you to pop on the Crucible for a moment. It was very kind to you. Uh, Spyro Floropolis, you've been waiting patiently in the background. Go ahead when you're ready. <laughs> All right, here we go. Listen, uh, you know how the, there are some couples that are so alike uh, that they uh, get end up getting divorced? You've seen that, right? <laughs> They're just so alike, they butt heads. Yeah, that's yeah. Peacecraft and Rob, except Rob would get full custody of the kids because Peacecraft is likely to drown them all for fun. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next. Okay. So, I liked him. I, I enjoyed it. Listen, I'm suffering from political dysphoria right now. Fuck you, Andrew. Next. Since canonically your middle name is Bartholomew, next time you do this, your actual name for this mock debate should be Bartholomew. I will therefore reference you as such moving forward. Here are the questions. Bartholomew, starting with you. Today. My daughter broke her arm. That's a real story, but it leads into the question. I, I Otherwise, I would have been in here moderating the debate. I couldn't. Let's assume for a moment. She's fine, everyone, by the way, but this is real. Let's assume for a moment that President Joe Biden decided to fly into Canada to check on my daughter while she was in the emergency room. Do you think that he would sniff her like she's some kind of narcotic upper? Yes or no? That's a rhetorical question. Question number two. Andrew, you are lost in the woods. You have your pick of two people. Both people are magically enforced to not harm you and to help you safely through the woods. Person number one is a very old man who is one shit from expiring. Person number two is a very old man who is a convicted felon and bangs a lot of chicks. Which do you pick to get you safely through the fucking woods, motherfucker? Um, I rest my case. Rob, <laughs> moving oh, no. on. Rob. Would Nervous. you agree historically, yes or no, that presidents <laughs> in the presidential position get special protections wherein they All might I said was, um, are you Shut the fuck up, up, you democratic communist. Rob, because of their presidential positions, they get protected and they get to do immoral or even illegal things and they get to skate by on the fact that they are presidents. Generally speaking, is that, do you think that's probably likely to have happened historically at some point? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now I give you a magic button. You can look into the future and what you can do is see President Biden, for example, or other scumbag Democratic presidents get properly prosecuted by law and convicted. And it's all because Trump's case, whether it was proper or not, opened that door. Is that a net positive or a net negative? Positive. Perfect. I'm done. Peace out, folks. I won the whole fucking debate. Fuck off, Spyro. Come in trying to fucking stooge craft with your loaded hypotheticals. You make me sick. I'm sick of you. The whole crucible <laughs> turned against me because they're scumbags. I never liked any of you. I never liked any of you. By the way, this is a great time to tell you, if you don't mind going over to the crucible grift shop, uh, you can find some very great items. Let me show you some of these. Don't those look great? Not one step back. You can also find these great t-shirts, not today degenerate. Obviously, I am mocking uh, evil Republicans. Uh, and that is your way that you can assist me in this mockery. Shane, you've been waiting patiently. Go ahead when you're ready. Yes, sir. Uh, it is refreshing to finally see the real side of Andrew. Uh, I knew it was not. Uh, I knew it was too good to be true. I'll be unsubscribing from the Crucible. However, before I do so, uh, here's my question for Andrew. With all the gaffes, literal physical stumbles, tumbles, and falls, and clear signs of dementia we've been seeing on his campaign, how can we have the confidence that Joe Biden will be able to lead another four years instead of being an elected houseplant being led from room to room? Okay, so let's grant that perhaps Biden uh, has kind of these faculty gaffes. He also delivered one hell of a State of the Union speech with no gaffes. It was considered even powerful by the Republicans. Even they couldn't criticize it. That is not a man who's not in control of their faculties. And on top of that, Trump is showing some signs of faculty, having faculty issues. He's falling asleep in court. He doesn't have the same energy that he had. He's also an old fucking man, dude. I think you're pointing to one example out of the many that you could find online with Biden. Oh, yeah. Do you think that and, most old and, men can, and can hours, deliver, can hours, deliver hours, these massive the speeches in the State of the Union that powerfully? I do. I don't think so. He wasn't that powerful. I'm done. He's on I'm amphetamines, done. 
And yes, most old men, if they oh, have... Oh, he's on amphetamines. Do you have any right. proof that yes. he's on amphetamines? I do have proof that he's on amphetamines. What is the proof? Legally, I can't show them right now because I don't want oh, the Biden So you made it the fuck prison. up? You made it the but fuck up? The dude's drugged to the gills. That's why he has... That's why we can't hear the per transcript. That's why they're literally... Merrick Garland throws people in jail for violating... Uh, being held in contempt, but he excludes himself because you can't read the transcript of the her interview because uh, it says the exact same thing. The audio says the exact same thing. It's because he, the guy's a fucking vegetable. We all know it. They prep him all year just to give one speech, pump him full of drugs. He okay, reads so the prompter. Trump has a cup of coffee. If Trump has off. a cup of coffee. He doesn't have the faculties to run the fucking country. Not true. Because when these old, when these old, these old people have to take medication constantly, dude. Constantly dude. at the doctor's order. Dude, the I, it, it's the equivalent of saying this, like, uh, Trump's like, you know, an old turtle that's slowing down. I'll take the old tortoise over the fucking vegetable. He's not a vegetable. It's ridiculous. Again, he, he delivered the a Easter hell of a Bunny speech. had to fucking walk even, around. He shit his Fox pants News, the other day. Even Fox News had to back off on the fucking Biden's dementia after Fox that sucks, State of the I'll Union sure. address. After that address, they had to. They had to back off on it. Shit you guys his are full pants. of fucking shit. He shit you know his what pants in Normandy. It's cope. He shit his pants. Cope. The guy shit his pants Total in Normandy. Cope. Trump looks like Don't he has a fucking dumpy. Life. Trump looks like he's always carrying a dump in his pants, dude. I that's don't know manly. if you've seen. I don't that's know if you've how, seen that's Fat, the look though, you're going when he's for. walking around. But he ain't exactly. I, I mean, wish I had that look. I want to look like so people are like, that guy shit his pants? I don't know. That's better than actually <laughs> so shitting your Trump. pants. I mean, Biden so you shits Biden. his pants. So then you love Biden. You love Biden. You want no. that look and it... Yeah, no, the whatever. look's one thing. Actually, the smell and the actual shit's another thing completely. Yeah, whatever, man. It's cope. Pure, unadulterated cope. Shane, did you have anything else? No, sir. I'll be right, You just came on here to fucking guess. ridicule me. Get out of here, you fucking loser. Get out of here. Fucking sick of you. Six-pack Chad, go ahead when you're ready. So one... Can you guys hear me? Yeah. I can. One correction I wanted to make to what Rob said was he said that uh, Andrew is doing a good job of emulating the typical argumentation of a Democrat, which I, which he is. But I don't think that's correct, because I think if most Democrats argued like Andrew, then Andrew would probably be the God Emperor of the United States. Now, Rob, I know that you are a MAGA scumbag. But I just wanted to ask you a specific question about... And he uh, is. He is a fucking MAGA scum. Just admit yeah. it, Rob. I'll admit it. Yeah, sure. fucking scumbag. Yeah. I think that MAGA Deplorable. scumbags... Yes, exactly. They should be exiled, in my opinion. But my question is, so you had mentioned uh, <laughs> Russian ships or submarines off the coast of Florida, right? Correct. Why is that a problem? Because it signifies the fact that the United States is losing its power as a feared and respected hegemon. And it leads to a chance of miscalculation, which could lead to an accidental conflict starting with Russia, which would lead to World War III. Okay, so if they're in international waters and they're not infringing on the, the boundaries of the United States territorial waters, you still think that it's a problem? Yes, I'm not really concerned about international law as much as I am as what this posturing leads to a chance of something occurring. Just okay. like so, if Cuba wanted the missiles there, that doesn't mean yeah. it wasn't a problem. I got you, man. So my question is, uh, or I guess my statement is, and question. So I know for a fact that United States vessels have been closer to China than than Russia currently is to Florida. Do you see that as an issue? Yes. I think, in fact, I would make the argument that I think that Russia was incentive, even though I don't like Russia, and I don't think that Russia was legitimately justified in invading Ukraine, certainly the fact the United States at one point by stationing a military base in Ukraine had a base that was something like a hundred and something miles from Russian territory. If Russia did that to the United States and had bases like that or labs that had biological weapons a hundred miles into Mexico, you're goddamn right that the United States would have a problem with it. And I think these escalations and the continuing expansions and provocations of hostile nations like this make it inevitable that we have bad relationships which lead to a better chance of miscalculation and we had fucking so, balloons chinese okay. balloons well, over major major american right, cities and we, we fucking that, what do you mean man what do you mean that that wasn't an enroachment enough for a war but some russian ships in the fucking middle of of uh international waters is 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm not okay. saying it's definite. Yes or no? I, are the chances of miscalc increased if there are military ships next to each yeah, other? Yeah, but opposed- that's that's tangentially true of any ship. A Chinese that's water right. ship. A Chinese also, water ship, that would be true of. That's that means we can't do international business because the more freighters we have who, who collect water in the fucking seas from China, there could potentially be an international incident. That's insanity. It's not t- also, near the same. I, I, uh, let me say this real quick. It's not near to the yeah, same yeah. level because miscalculation means you're afraid that your opponent's going to do something, so you preempt it. You're not. The United States isn't going to be afraid of a civil civilian vessel that's interested in trade off Why the coast of the United States as opposed to a warship. Those but wait, that's in fucking insane. They have CCP spies all over those fucking ships. Those ships are often there for surveillance. The chances of there being an international crisis just due to the fact that people could be in on international waters just outside of our jurisdiction collecting intel from their supposed you know, Chinese waterships, I think is the is the exact same argument, but you're not going to shut down global trade because of this. A simple Bob. yes, no, a simple yes, no will suffice. Do you think the chance of miscalc increases when it's a hostile nation's military vessel versus a civilian ship? Do you think that it increases yeah, if I it's think a military that that's vessel? Tangentially a yes or true. no will suffice. Yes, yes. it's tangentially true. But exactly. so what? That doesn't make that doesn't, your point. It doesn't that make, doesn't your, make point. your point, dude. Yes, and does. you didn't answer my question. Why is it a problem if the United States does it to China? That, by your own logic, also increases the chances Correct. of some sort of that's foreign fucking right. conflict. That's right. You're making my argument for me, which is No, why... that's not a good no, argument. <laughs> Are you going to shut down global trade? Again, trade is different than actual military bases, military troops, military vessels. The oh, argument, okay. if you let me finish... Right. Okay. The, the argument yeah. that you two are making here is my argument. I say that we should stop provoking this, stop having military expansionism into all of these countries, because I do think that's bad and is provoking people that are seen as in countries that are seen as our enemies. You're like, oh, well, the fact that you isolate that Russia has a military vessel off the coast of the United States. Well, what about the United States? Yes, both are bad. That's okay, my let's, argument. Let's, hang, on, hang on. Let me test this logic and just see if it's okay. true or not, Rob. Would you say that it's tangentially true that if you own a swimming pool, your chances of drowning in a swimming pool greatly increase? Yes. Would you say that if you own a a firearm, that your chances of accidentally dying by that firearm greatly increase? Yes. Would you outlaw firearms? No. Then shut the fuck up, Rob. Okay, now let me ask you. Now, I generously answered you quickly. I didn't need to him and ha like you do. So I ask you, do you think someone whose stated goal is to kill you being your neighbor increases the chance that you have a violent conflict versus someone who doesn't have that stated goal? Of course, I think it's tangentially true, yes. But but that makes my point, not your point. No, it doesn't. Which is that you're not going to shut these things down just because it's tangentially true that it could increase the likelihood of X. That's an insane fucking position. The logical gap that you have here is assuming because there is a chance of miscalculation with even civilian ships that that somehow is equal because we can never get rid of every civilian ship. That's equal to the chance of miscalculation to having hostile foreign battleships or hostile foreign mil- militaries miles away from your border. Anyone, why not who's have being gun re- control, anyone who's being remotely objective could see that that's clearly fallacious and you're obviously trying to gaslight people into it's ignoring not, the Not only reality. is it not fallacious, it's your logic. Why not have gun so, control then, Rob? You wouldn't you want gun control because you ha- yourself just acknowledged that the chances of you accidentally harming yourself with a firearm greatly increased just by owning it. That would always be, hang on, that would always be tangentially true just like the swimming pool. Saying that, oh, well, this could increase the chances of an international fucking incident because these ships are out here. That's always true about every fucking thing, though. That That's makes right. It makes no sense to apply that and say, oh, we're going to make a fucking some foreign policy decision based around the fact that this tangentially is true that your chance of an international incident could increase. That's nuts. The stupidity we don't make of this any argument, policy based on that. The stupidity of this argument is tantamount to this. Isn't it true that you could get in a wreck driving five mile an hour? So you might as well drive 200 mile an hour. That's your logic. Is, that is not my logic. My logic it is, is your the logic. Opposite. My logic is the opposite, which is there are clearly thresholds to this. Yes, it's entirely true. Oh, now it's there, a threshold argument. Well, okay. it's, it's clearly true that your chances of having two militaries accidentally fire on each other and start a war are massively increased if they're stationed side by side to each other that's rather than if it's a civilian ship in the country. Everything. You, you that's keep, I don't know true if you know about what, everything. I don't know if you even know what the words you're saying mean. 
I don't. Well, here, I let me explain them. When I say it's tangentially true, that means, yes, an entailment of this, it is true. Tangentially, when you're talking about, uh, hey, uh, if you have a swimming pool, do your chances increase of drowning in that swimming pool just yes. by lieu of owning it? The answer is yes. But so fucking what? We're not going to craft policy around you can't own a swimming pool because your chances that's, of drowning in it increase just like you wouldn't craft policies on a fucking warship again, in international what waters you're saying what you're saying is ignoring the threshold of this so what we would do as what is anyone, this threshold what, shit what, what we would do is do a cost benefit analysis so yes it is true that my chances of drowning slightly increases if i have a swimming pool but the benefits of having a swimming pool for my personal liberty personal enjoyment etc etc go up and i think that the benefits outweigh the cost now what you're saying is but if I could show a situation where clearly the costs severely outweigh the benefits, that's irrelevant because there's always costs. Because uh, the, tangentially, there's always cost. So there's no sense doing a cost benefit. And it allows you to make ridiculous statements like saying, well, a civilian ship will always be around the United States. Therefore, we should have oh. no problem with military oh, ships no. that are right or wrong. Oh, border. No. Did I do that right? Oh, no. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen to like. me. You listen to me and you understand that what you're saying, this is how stupid what you're saying is. Rob, should we outlaw fast food? No. What about the cost benefit analysis? I think that the people's liberty to eat what they want and not have the government. For oh, them. I see. Just like the liberty of people to be out in international water with Aurora ships, none of your fucking business. No, a military, a hostile military being a mile off the coast of us or a couple of miles off the coast of us. Is, it in, your, is, it, in your, is it in your waters, Rob? It's, it's not, not a couple. Waters. It's not your waters. So then, do it's I not, own the waters? Not, is that your? Yeah, it's not, it, it's not the United States waters either. So the thing is, uh, here's, I don't here, care let me, about give, you, let me give you a quick cost benefit analysis. If we outlawed all fast food tomorrow, mm -hmm. do you think that the health and welfare of the United States would increase or decrease? Increase. Increase. Mm -hmm. So why should I take your benefit, what you are saying is a perceived benefit, which is this kind of bizarre liberty argument of saying, but it increases liberty, though. So would uh, opium, so would heroin, so would all these things. And those things you would say, no, we should outlaw all of those things because of the cost benefit analysis. But you want to apply it to fast food, which arguably would kill far more people yearly than any of those things based on liberty, Rob. That makes no fucking sense. It's just tangentially true. And you're coping. No, it's not. What you do is you don't understand what my, you might disagree with what my benefits are of saying I don't want an authoritarian government telling me what I'm allowed to eat or not. And I think that it'll lead to more authoritarianism that makes the quality of our life diminish, even if it would save lives in the short term because people would be forced to eat healthier. There'd also be other sort of costs that we're not looking at, such as there wouldn't be enough cheap available food for people that rely on fast food right now to immediately transition. So there would have to be some sort of transition period to make it beneficial. However, what you're ignoring with all of this is is you have no argument whatsoever to say that just because there is always risk in something or always cost in something, therefore we can't isolate when the cost massively outweighs the benefit because there's always some sort of inherent risk or cost. This is it clearly outweighs the benefit. Give me the benefit. Clearly outweighs the benefit of fast food. Give me the benefit. Give me the benefit of Russian warships five miles off the coast of Florida or U.S. warships five miles off the coast. As soon of China. as you give me the fucking no. benefit of a double cheeseburger, triple stack with fucking onions. Go yes. ahead. I I enjoy eating them. That's my. Oh, I, I, okay, I, I, I enjoy looking at fucking warships. I did want to make one like, last what, point. What kind of argument is that? Because I did want to make one last point. So first of all, Rob, first it was one to two miles. Now it's five miles because <laughs> at, you you got to walk it back. It's more than first of all, most in most places. In fact, it could be all over the world. Miles. International world. International waters are considered 12 to 15 miles off the coast of any continent. Okay. But that's besides the point. So you said that. Uh, you, one of the problems you have with these Russian warships off the coast of Florida is Make that it very it, quick. We got to get okay, to the next call. It, We're running it, out it, of time very quick. It infringes upon the power of the United States as, as one of the global superpowers, right? I said that it is in, emblematic of the fact that the United States is no longer a hegemon. Okay, well, if they We're are... Done. We're done. I'm sorry. All right. That's all, right. all we all can good. do. Thank you so much. Six-pack Chad. Adam Dole, you've been waiting patiently. Go ahead. All right, uh, Rob, we talked before because mm -hmm. everybody's taking completely insane positions. I'm going to defend the deep state. All right. So <laughs> um, basically, the the position is that Biden is actually based and cool due to formalism. The principle is Biden, because he looks like a blithering idiot, basically shows that actually the deep state is in control. This is a benefit. Um, but also the deep state is cool. And so the so the question, Nor, is at what point in American history are you appealing to like being against this unelected bureaucracy. How about before 1913, before the Federal Reserve and the IRS? Oh, uh, some tinfoil hat shit. 
<laughs> okay. Real shit that happened. But mm-hmm. I, interestingly so, enough, I thought this was the argument. The global that banking cartel. Uh, oh. oh, I can't hear you. I think you muted yourself. Which was probably for the best. Uh, I, interestingly, I thought this was the argument Andrew was going to bring up, and there the is global argument. the global technocrats and the global banking elite own the United States, right? Right? Hey, Rob, do you have any tinfoil next to you? Uh, hey, well, what booster are you on, Andrew? Did you get your seventh booster yet? Trust the science. I have autoimmune issues, Rob. <laughs> I'm sure you do. You're a left hand. Okay. <laughs> I have okay, autoimmune just, issues. Go ahead, just, Adam. So, so the point I'm making is that you have to appeal to a point in time prior to managerial, uh, the the managerial system that we currently live under. Correct. You, you, uh, and it's like, okay, well, looking at like every other country in the world since then that has any amount of power, they're all managerial. Mm-hmm. So effectively, what you're arguing for is a massive decrease in American power, which makes us inc- which makes us much weaker. Uh, com- in comparison to places like China. That's not true at all, actually. The managerial state actually weakens the United States. Percentage-wise, when you look at the percentage of people in our country versus the size of the government and the administrative state, we can see that it is the most, not only is it just by pure numbers, the biggest government in the history of the world, it also has the highest percentage of people that are involved in that. And the problem is that it becomes economically inefficient and it also becomes corrupt because you're putting so much power in these institutions that are at best incompetent and at worst corrupt. And so actually, we don't need to go back to some sort of Luddite state where we don't have any sort of government or anything like that, though the ANCAPs would disagree and the Libertarians would disagree. My suggestion is we start by taking an axe to 60, 70 percent of the administrators that work in our federal government. There is no evidence whatsoever that this would diminish the ability for the government to achieve the tasks that we would all agree are important, such as infrastructure or solving sex trafficking crimes and things like that. But what it would do is take out a lot of the regress and a lot of the excesses that we see of these institutions, like targeting people for political reasons or things that are just self evidential or evidentiary is not the word self-fulfilling prophecies to justify their own phony baloney jobs this would free up money for the private sector and influence for the private sector and so we could get back to a government and an economy that actually work for average working class people as opposed to sort of this insane bureaucracy so so the problem with what you're saying is that it doesn't actually bear out in reality at all you're you're sort of vaguely gesturing to something that has not happened post world war ii um every single major power in the world has had these massive bureaucracies so we can reason empirically that having massive bureaucracies is a sign that you're doing well or that it's necessary can you point to a government that is a similar power to the u.s or china that does not have an an attached massive bureaucracy or that has massively reduced a massive bureaucracy it's a difficult question because what you i could turn the question to you can you point to a country that you would say is similar to the united states question of bureaucracy aside so any country i say you could say well that's not really similar we were told these same arguments with argentina when millier came in we were told oh if he cuts these programs like he suggested it'll be a disaster we see so far the exact opposite has occurred right and so you'll say well argentina isn't the size of the united states true but no country is and the united states's bureaucracy has grown exponentially more than other countries for example, do you think the United States, when it comes to their status as a world superpower, is higher now or was higher post-World War II? Um, it would have to necessarily be post-World War II. Okay, because, did we have a bigger because, bureaucracy then or now? Well, hold on. This is because now other countries have had time to catch up. Post-World War II is a very unique time in world history because all of the former superpowers just got wrecked during a war. The U.S. was in a very unique position post-World War II because it was on the outside of a lot of the main fighting. The, the only really like American front that actually attacked American land was in the Pacific. Whereas when you're comparing it to the Europeans, well, I don't, I don't think I have to say much more. Obviously, Europe got bombed to shit. So, so to say, oh, was, was America more powerful when everybody else was weaker or after everybody else got to catch up with the managerial system? Obviously, when other people catch up and they start doing managerialism, too, they're going to be more powerful. The idea that it's managerialism that got them to catch up is nonsense. It's just a correlation argument. You have no right. evidence that the managerialism. Adam, is we got to we got to leave it there. Fun, though. Uh, yeah. we're, right. we're, we're running. We're running out of time. I appreciate it very much. Uh, Chad, go ahead when you're ready. 
<laughs> Andrew's, Andrew's wife's wife. boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> it's your boyfriend, Chad, go ahead. here, right? Go, go ahead, you Chad. You did such a good job against this Republic Hard. You get to get this new Nintendo Switch game that you've been looking for this whole time, <laughs> and you get to, get to stay up past your bedtime. Me and your wife are going to go my, out for dinner now. My, <laughs> good night. My blue hair? <laughs> He'll let you hold the all camera. Right. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. That's uh, he he booked. Uh, Chad, thank you for the call in. Uh, Rob, okay, so we're going to get to the super chats now. Uh, the debate is closed. I hope uh, that I can pop on your channel if you're going to be streaming a little bit after this. Yeah, a little. Yeah. So that we can do a debate wrap down. Yeah. But would you mind checking your PayPal account real quick? Yeah, sure. Let's take a look here. Don't say the number, but I wanted to thank you on behalf of the Crucible for Thanks. helping me prep. It, it was. Says, uh, oh, fuck. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't say shit. Well, no, but, I see that my, uh, my gay porn, uh, came out so is that is that what we're looking at yeah. my payment for my but i wanted to make sure that you knew that uh that was very valuable Thank to you, me I and i really it. really appreciate it uh helping me out with this um Thanks. so the I wilsons the wilsons wanted to make sure that your time was adequately compensated this was by far one of the toughest debates i've had all year it's fun. uh and it was, it was so brutal <laughs> um but anyway, let me get over to the super chats, guys. Uh, thank ev I want to thank everybody who donated, of course. Uh, Jay Dolph says, Juneteenth membership from Black X Y. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> thank you to everybody who gifted a Crucible membership. It was very kind of you. Uh, Poopa Chalupa for five bucks says, Biden, Mr. Gubenshaft, tear doing these gas prices. He immediately had my vote after telling that to an ATM. <laughs> That's, That's fair. That's fair. Uh, Cobble for ten dollars says laugh out loud for those re-reads who think Andrew is actually pro Biden. Learn to read. For all those who are being sarcastic, God bless you, you're beautiful animals. Yeah, this was. Um, I, when I think about debate prep, debate prep is very difficult, um, especially when you're watching another person's position. the The way that you can really get in there is if you take their position and you try to own it as much as you can. And I, I feel like that gives you an advantage that most people never have. Uh, there's really nobody else other than Rob, I think, who could have done this, to be honest with you. Uh, Andrew is playing the setup, man. Rob knocks it over the fence. It was pretty contentious. I feel like I won that debate, but the Crucible audience completely disagrees with me. <laughs> uh, ben Talk for $5 says, I'm convinced voting for Biden. What wonderful points. I never thought of it that way. <laughs> fair. That's fair. No one to you for $5 says, there was a lefty audience. They would be loving this shit. It's true. Uh, CNN's going to have a field day, Andrew. I know I'm going to now I will be appearing on CNN. I will have my own show. Uh, the grift <laughs> continues. Jeremiah Cook for $10 says bizarro world version of Andrew. If this debate excluded mock from the title and I saw it <laughs> first thing in the morning, I would assume I was in some Truman show scenario. <laughs> uh, does Andrew sell used cars in his spare time? I do not. Uh, by the way, Albino One X, thank you for the Crucible memberships. You guys have been so kind. We're going to get over to the Dono chat soon. Uh, Shifty McVeigh says, for the record, I'm just supporting the channel. I realize our Andrew's arguing for fun. I hope everyone else knows that. Uh, they do, but they were getting into the spirit of things as well. Uh, Shifty says, for another five, correction. Arguing for a reason, not fun. This is painful but important. Andrew's the man. Support him. Appreciate that very much. I got to keep this in chat. Andrew arguing to make a later argument mock. <laughs> Uh, Alf for five Canadian dollars, almost real money, says, Andrew, your liberal position needs improvement, needs more emotional outbursts, yelling ad homs, degrees in sociology. So I did uh, I did try my best to have a degree in sociology, but I did try. Uh, I did see the super chat pop up as we were going and I did try to spurg a little bit more. I do feel like that's uh, that's fairly helpful to the position. Shifty says mock interview. Don't lop Andrew in as a leftist. That's ludicrous. Got to admit he's winning, although it's gross to watch. I think that there was uh, some points there that Rob trounced my ass on, but there were some points I think that even Rob's going to have to shore up. Uh, this is what arm shaving does to a man, <laughs> says Fresh Felmini. <laughs> for five, for you know, five Australian dollars now, right? Yeah, Destiny is going to review this in his new Pfizer <laughs> jacket he got. Andrew actually deserves more money for this, winning it regardless of which side. Appreciate that very much. Very kind of you guys. Uh, $5 comes in from Adriano, who says, Andrew, pull your head out of your ass. Trump 24. Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> Bob, thank you for the 20 Crucible memberships. Very kind of you. 
Adriano for five dollars says Biden is massively deporting these people. Thirty million since the Biden admin. Andrew, are you sure you don't work for CNN? <laughs> Uh, well, all of us here at CNN resent that remark. It sounds very bigoted, uh, and I think that you owe all of us here an apology. Uh, Six Pack Chad for five dollars says, "I'm honestly shocked that Andrew's a Biden supporter. I kind of lost some respect for him, to be honest." Rare Andrew L. <laughs> that's that's fair. Uh, Adriano says Biden is massively deporting people. Are you okay? Are you sure you don't work for CNN? <laughs> uh, Omar Ramos for $5 says, what's the difference between law and policy? That distinction is key. And the left loses on that. Law on the books does not equal policy of the administration. That's true. We didn't get into that. But I think that that's a point that me and Rob could argue probably ad nauseum. Uh, Adriano says Trump did less to remove them since Biden had been an influx of 30 million. Andrew, go to sleep, you gaslighter. You know, you fucking people. I I totally won that whole section, too, you fucking bastards. Unconventional man for $5 says Andrew is surprisingly very impressive debating as a lefty. He is truly an extremely intelligent, talented man. It's very kind of you to say. Um, I did want to give it my all for this uh, this debate. Uh, Rob is a very talented debater. Um, I think that Rob also knows the leftist arguments as well as I do, which makes it even more kind of um, challenging, so... Uh, Shifty says, screw it. I'm voting for Biden now. <laughs> you win, Andrew. Congrats. $10 from Dot Slop Dot says, Andrew's WPM increased by at least 1.5 speed. When he turned into a leftist, we call this the destiny disease. <laughs> uh, Wrestle sends in $10, says, hit him with nobody's above the law in your closing statement. I sh- I didn't do Fuck that. I, fu- yeah, I fucked that up. I agree. I fucked that all up. Um I'm sorry about that, Rezzle. You can be mad if you want. Trans Drew is hilarious. It's going to take some time to shake that nickname. Hats off to Andrew. I appreciate that. Small Test says, don't recall the mayor of New York complaining about the number of illegals in his city under Trump. Oof. That would have been kind of a brutal counter to get into. Simping for Destiny, defending Biden. What's next? Studying the epistles, shaving your arms, getting an OnlyFans, quitting drinking the champagne of beers. This, these are the questions. Gordzilla for $10 says, fucking hell, could you imagine if Andrew was truly a lefty? He would be dangerous there. Trump 2024. Appreciate that, Gordzilla. It's very kind of you. Uh, Justin Henley said, F you, Corinth. I did see that super chat come through. The only reason I'm reading it, even though it's a $2 super chat, is because I agree, F you, Corinth. Uh, Richie says, for $10, Andrew, you monetize having the best arguments given to you. Impressive grift. <laughs> Fucking fuck you, Richie. <laughs> uh, Shifty McBay says now we need a trans Drew hoodie. Uh, new Crucible merch. What about Biden Doe t shirts available today? Wood Floor Alchemist says Rob, defend red flag gun laws, bump stock ban, bill against anti Semitism on college campuses. What policy by any president affects the economy, if not the Federal Reserve policy? Um, unfortunately, we couldn't get into everything. Uh, there's a, you, you just, you never can, you know what I mean, in these debates. Uh, but very quickly, let me get over to the uh, Dono Chat side. Thank you guys all so much for the support. I'm sure Rob appreciates it as well. Um, so real quick here, uh, over on the Dono side. And man, there's a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of Dono. $25 from Dark Shadow says, appreciate what you do for Christianity. Appreciate that. $100 donation comes in from Anonymous. Very kind of you to do. $5 from Fresh, Fresh Palmini says, left-wing Andrew isn't real. Left-wing Andrew can't hurt you. Left-wing Andrew. <laughs> uh, $10 from Cobble says, not one sniff back. Thank God you're on our side, brother. I'm going to have to watch this in segments between violent vomiting sessions. And good luck on Tim Pool Kick-Ass. Hey, I really appreciate that. Rob did a fantastic job, I think, of helping me prep for that. Thomas J. Foolery says, Trans Drew's black ex-wife is actually a Republican. That's why she divorced him. Dollars <laughs> <laughs> comes in from Wisdom Seeker who says, possible solution to fertility crisis. One, announce all women 18 to 30 must report for the draft in six months unless pregnant. Well, and, and also he follows with, that's it. Crisis solved. <laughs> that's, that's actually really, um, that's kind of really based, actually. Uh, $5 from S. Dude who says, Andrew, breaking today. Biden administration just announced a plan to give amnesty to over 500,000 illegal immigrants. I had to laugh at your arguments for Biden on illegal immigration. 
Uh, that doesn't mean the plan would go through. $60, huge no-no from Dark Horse. Isn't it true, you doddering old man, that Biden has been declared unfit for office in his own defense as stated by his lawyer in terms of a trial for alleged criminal S charges? Uh, no, that's actually factually not true. $5 from Nathan. We must do all we can to mobilize the, the truender dash bad oppression. I don't know what the fuck that word is. I don't know what that word. How do you pronounce this? Rob, I'm putting this in the private chat. Okay. How do I? Okay. Tell me how. What am I looking at here? What am I looking at here? Hang on. What is this word? True in the shop of pressure. True. What? True in the shop of the pressure. True in the shot of pressure. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That, that, that was a Biden gaffe. I'm sorry. Yeah. It was a Biden gaffe. That was a fucking L. Sparky's that I'm on gonna, it? Yeah. I'm going to get the worst L from the chat for that one. That's a Tim Pool's favorite one, by the way. <laughs> $10 from um, Villafier. The acceleration argument is the best argument for Biden. It wasn't really brought up tonight, but uh, Richard definitely will. Yep. I'm actually looking forward to that. Uh, but... Gape and Aninium says, Andrew, blink twice if the Biden administration found something on you or the black ex-wife. Okay, look at me. Uh, so $10 comes in from the blind guy. Andrew, you're an excellent debate tactician and rhetorician. However, ideas matter. I think Rob got the win. Fair enough. Uh, $20 from <coughs> Red Sand, 1984. Does this mean Andrew is rocking blue hair with the feminist on whatever from now on? <laughs> Sitting the other side of the table, yeah. Um, anyway, I appreciate all of the great dono chats, and I appreciate all the chats that came in. We're going to get this done right at the three-hour mark. Perfect. It's great. One more time to the members on the panel aircraft sparky let's start with you tell everybody where they can find you thank you so much for moderating the debate by the way i appreciate the opportunity andrew it was my it was my pleasure uh thank you all for coming by tonight my name is aircraft sparky you can find me on wednesday nights and monday nights on youtube rubble and twitch uh appreciate it thank you so much okay rob nor rob nor normal america on youtube uh stream in wednesday thursday friday evenings usually or some uh, conjunction of those. Uh, thank you to everyone in the Crucible audience as well, particularly those that are contributing through chatting in many hilarious ways and through the donations. I think that um, Andrew and the Crucible is my favorite place to go to. I think it's important to win these cultural battles, and he's actually putting his money where his mouth is. And when you're donating and helping out, whether it be financially or elsewise, you're actually really helping move the needle culturally, which is arguably more important than politically. So thank you all for that and the continued great support for me and everyone else that comes on here. Now, what I'm going to do is this uh, to the Crucible audience. I'm going to do an exclusive after hours with Rob Nord. That has been a custom of ours for like two years. <laughs> we've, we've basically always done this. Um, so I'm going to set up a raid to go over there. I'm going to take a, a quick breather. Um, I got it set right now. I'm going to take a, a quick breather, maybe uh, uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, something like that, just so that I can uh, relieve myself. And then I will be on his channel and we'll do kind of an after breakdown. Uh, Rob, I really appreciate your time. It was very kind of you. And let me get rid of both of you fuckers because I'm sick of you and give my outro. Make sure you go over. I'm gonna do. I'm doing a, a raid right now to Rob Norris' channel. Again, we'll have exclusive content over there this evening. I'm heading over there. From all of us here at the Crucible to all of you out there in Crucible Land, make sure you become a member of the Crucible Video if you want to see this great mock debate and mini debates, uh, which you can only see here. Um, this has been very helpful. The 21st, I'll be on Tim Pool's show, and we'll be duking it out with Richard Spencer going to be fantastic i really appreciate it from all of us here at the crucible to all of you out there in crucible land have a wonderful night and so he brings back up uh, me or it's just going to be uh she is <laughs> You can hear me, but you can't see. Oh, look at that. I'm waiting for Andrew to bring my screen up because if I uh, leave, uh, I won't be able to see. So you can hear me. You see Andrew. You can hear me. Should I try to sound like him? 
Just could grab another cigarette here. These damn only fan whores. Really get me down right now. <laughs> ah, what a fun debate. Let's see if I can get Angie to bring my screen up. Uh, yeah, Andrew, bring me up on the screen because otherwise I have to leave the, uh, there you go. He'll get it. He heard me. Anyways, what a lot of fun. I knew it would be. I absolutely love debating Andrew, whether it be serious or mock debates like this. I think that it is amazing. Uh, one of the reasons that obviously it's a little different tonight because he's. Hang on. Uh, give me a second here, Rob. Yeah, yeah, no problem. A quick second. And I will, um, I'll be back. Just give me a, a quick chance to. Get my shit together on this day. Yeah, sounds good. Sparrow, thanks so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. I really do. Robin is boomer tech issues. Yeah, absolutely true. Um, yeah. I, thanks for watching. There is hope in Jesus Christ. He will never leave you or forsake you. Like and subscribe and join our Discord for friends and more.